Have you ever wondered how much home you can afford? If you've sat there and Googled it, gotten lost in all of that, cannot figure it out, you are in the right place today. We are on part one of our series on the home buying process. And today we're joined with Rhonda and she's going to explain this very interesting question. Rhonda, how much home can I afford? Wow, that's a great question, Melissa. So kind of the rule of thumb that we look for as a lender is that for your house payment, we don't want to spend much more than about 30% of your gross income just to go towards your house payment. But we have another qualifying factor that we're going to be looking at as well, which is your house payment plus any other monthly debts that you pay. And we want to see that that's not a lot more than 40% of your gross monthly income. And we work off the gross monthly income, Melissa, because we know that you're going to have taxes, Social Security, unemployment, maybe you put into a 401k, and all of those things are going to come out of that gross income. And on top of that, you have to live, right? So you need gas and groceries and utilities and all of that. So we know that the kind of magic sweet spot is if we don't spend more than 30% of your gross income for your housing and more than 40% for your housing plus your other car payments, credit cards, student loans, scheduled debts like that then you're going to have the greatest success at home ownership. A lot of times we have people that um, are on non-taxable income, like disability or social security or veterans benefits. And so there's a really cool little trick that we can do with that where we can add back in what would have been taken out in taxes and actually make their income higher so that we can calculate out those ratios. And I know we've done that. I know we've done that with a couple because you you always ask that question of the veteran when I put them on the phone with you, are are you on disability? And I'm always like, how does that work? So again, gross income is what you use to calculate. And so you really shouldn't be spending more than about 30%. And then what makes up that other 10%? So that's going to be your car payments, your credit cards, your loans, scheduled monthly payments, not just for living. Um, So that's money that you've borrowed that you're paying back. And here's one of the challenges that we have with that, Melissa, is that, golly, these, these, these car payments are just crazy expensive these days. And so sometimes we have eight, nine, $1,000 car payments, and that really squishes down how much you're going to be able to afford for a home. There's a lot of student loans out there right now that are in deferment, but at some point over the next 30 years, you may have to actually start paying on them. And we want to make sure that we're counting those potential payments into that ratio, even though you're not paying on them right now today. Credit cards, they're kind of a moving uh, target. We're only going to count whatever the required minimum payment is, not what the total payment is. And then every now and then we also have some things like Maybe you're paying off an IRS tax bill, or maybe you're paying child support or alimony, or in the case of veterans, sometimes you have to pay that make us count daycare. So there's a lot of different things that go into that 10%. So we want to take a look at that whole big picture and make sure we're setting you up for success. Because I think what I heard you say is at the very beginning of this, we want to look at your gross income minus your housing expense and any of your other debts and set you up for success because we wouldn't want to, like, let's say, I mean, cause the average buyer thinks, oh my gosh, I just got my bump into pay. I'm now making $120,000 a year gross. They think they can afford that three, $400,000 house. But then when they sit down with you, they realize that that, beautiful car they're driving for $1,000 a month goes against that 40%, correct? Correct, correct. So I always say buy your garage first and then buy the car to put in it. So the car loans aren't near as strict on those ratios as the mortgage loans are because let's face it, we've got a 30-year long relationship that we've got going on here. So again, we want to be uh, set you up for success and show that you're going to be able to manage these payments. Now, it's not set in stone. There are people that have no debts. And so they can afford a little bit more on their house payment. 
And so we have some flexibility there. There are people that are really frugal, really great savers, have really great credit, and maybe they um, have a little bit more debt or they have loans that we have to count against them, but they really don't have to pay yet. And we've got some flexibility there. And so it's not set in stone. It's just a good rule of thumb. So I think the key takeaway today is if you're sitting at home watching this and you've been thinking about making a move, you want to kind of know how much home can I afford? At the end of this video is information about how to reach out to Rhonda. And she can simply chat with you on the phone 15, 20 minutes. What I love about her website is you can actually click on a button and calendar a time with her. So I just think that's genius. I don't know of any other place that's doing that. I love that you're doing that because maybe I just want to pick up the phone and call you and say, hey, I'm thinking about making a move. This is about what I make a month. This is what my, and of course, everybody's saying about their taxes right now. So you kind of know because you've either just gotten your 1099 or your W-2 showing what your gross was. So you pretty much know what that is and set a time on her website to call and chat with her and she can go over all this with you and then you can kind of have a good idea of really and truly how much home you can afford because what you don't want to do is not know when you go home shopping because oftentimes we end up with a little bit of disappointment because you fall in love with that $500,000 house, but you're only on a $300,000 budget. So we want to shop within your price point and find you a house that you can comfortably afford and live in, right? Exactly. And one more thing you can do on my website, which is just rondajohnson.net, is if you scroll down to the bottom, there's some calculators and you can plug in your loan amount, you can plug in the interest rate, and it'll tell you what those payments will be. Um, so easy calculator to work with there on the website as well. So that's perfect. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We do work and live here in Alaska. We do answer our phones. We do respond to emails. Follow me on Melissa Harmel Realtor on all my social media sites, and we'll see you guys next week.